Hi, I hope you're doing well. So if you want to write code in order to utilize the chat GPT API, then it's extremely helpful to understand the request and response parameters of the API. Because without that knowledge, it'd be like trying to order food without a menu and not even knowing what restaurant you're at. You might be like, could I have some eggplant Parmesan? And the way to be like, well, I could ask the cook, but usually we make tacos. The goal of this lesson is to familiarize you with the ChatGPT API parameters so that you can start writing code that is going to fully utilize the power of these cool new AI tools right in your own projects. So in this lesson, we're gonna talk about the minimum data that you need to send for the chat API to create a response. You're gonna learn about the different chat GPT roles, namely system, user, and assistant, and their uses. We're gonna talk about the most confusing part of the API that is really quite simple. We'll talk about other chat parameters, and finally, we'll talk about the key elements of the ChatGPT JSON response. Now, to best appreciate this material, you may want to set up an OpenAI developer account and test the ChatGPT API if you haven't already. I highly recommend once you finish watching this video, go to the link in the description to watch the previous video on doing just that. Okay, so we're getting started using the ChatGPT API, and we're going to send it an HTTP request. So what does the ChatGPT API actually expect? I mean, using an API is pretty straightforward. You send some requests and you get some responses. When you send a post request to the ChatGPT API, you will include a JSON packet with the data needed to obtain a response from the model. So when I say JSON packet, it just means information organized in a specific format, in this case, the JSON format. So the information that we send needs to include specific things called parameters. There's only two parameters that you need to specify to the ChatGPT API, and those are model and messages. Model, this is what specifies the chat model that you're gonna be using. The specific model names are outlined in the OpenAI documentation, and we'll make sure to have a link to that below. An example might be GTP4. Now, the messages parameter is actually an array of message objects. Each message object has to include a role and content parameters. Now, there are other parameters like name, but those are optional. Here's an example of the response parameters that we would include in our JSON packet to the ChatGPT API. So the model has been specified as GPT4. This means the GPT-4 model will be generating the response. Now, there's several different OpenAI chat models as of this writing, and I am sure there's a ton more to come. Each one has its own different capabilities and associated costs. But this is where you as a developer need to decide which one is appropriate for your case, and that's what you're going to put in there, you know, which one you specify. You can see we also have the messages array here. Each message in the message array has two parameters role and content. There is an additional name parameter that you can send in each message, but it's not required. So here, this message array holds four separate messages, each with the role and content specified. So you might be like, okay, the content part, that makes sense, but what are these roles and what are they used for? So let's take a moment and talk about the ChatGPT API roles. So what these roles do is tell the model how it should treat the content. So there's three roles currently. There's the user, the assistant, and the system. The user lets the model know that the following content is from the user. For example, the person who actually asked the question. When the assistant role is specified, it lets the model know that the content was generated as a response to the user. That is, that it was a model-generated response. And finally, the system role is a message that is specified by the developer in order to steer the model's response. Now, depending on the model being used, the system message may have more or less impact on the actual responses that you get. So let's go back to our messages array here and just look at the different messages and the roles and the content of each. So we've got four messages in our messages array 
And each one, they, you know, we've specified different roles here. So the first role is system. So the content here, what we're trying to do is we're telling the model, use this to steer the response of the model. So here we're saying respond as a pirate. Now this next message, the role has been defined as user. So this is the actual question or interaction coming from the end user. Here it's, what is another name for tacking and sailing? So they're just asking a question. The next message here, the role has been identified as the assistant. So this means that this content right here was actually created by the model. It might be a little confusing, might be scratching your head right now, like, wait a second, Mike, but we're gonna cover what's going on here in just a moment. And then finally, the last message we've got is again, the role is specified as the user and just asking another follow-on question. Hey, how do you do it? So here we've specified four message objects, but how many message objects must you send? Well, this touches on the most confusing thing about the ChatGPT API until you learn about it. So here's the deal. When you send a message or messages to ChatGPT, you must include all of your previous questions and responses that you've received from the model if you want the model to respond with an answer that is couched in the context of your previous conversation. Okay, so that's kind of a mouthful, but let me try to say that again. What I'm saying is that every time you send a request to the ChatGPT API, you need to include all of the messages that not only you have previously sent, but that the model has given you and any system messages that you had in there. Now, if you don't do that, if you only send one message at a time, then the response you get from the model is not going to incorporate those previous interactions. Now, here's why this is. The model has no memory. The questions you ask the model and the responses you get back do not persist anywhere inside the model. So if you want the model to remember what you just asked it a second ago, then you need to include, you must include the previous messages as well as the responses that you got back. You know, this sort of makes sense if we remember that what the ChatGPT model does is predict the next word to say. So let's go ahead, let's look at our example message array from before one more time. Now, if you gave me this message as array and you said, hey Mike, predict you know the next couple words that uh, the assistant might respond with. You know, I might say something about navigation, moving the sails, and I'd probably try to work Davy Jones into the mix as well. But if you gave me a messages array that only had one message, and that message was, how do you do it? My prediction would probably be, do what? Because I have no idea of the previous context. So if we want the model to respond seemingly intelligently to our questions, we need to provide it with as much history as we can. In another video, when we dive into the chat GP Tweeno terminal code, you will see a lot of work is done to store these messages between the user and the assistant, as well as including system messages into our JSON packet that we send. Now we said the minimum parameters that we need to send in order to get a response from the chat GPT API is the model and the messages array. But there are a ton of other parameters that you can specify. And if you go to the OpenAI documentation for developers, then you can see and check out all these different parameters. These different parameters can help modulate all types of things in the response, like from how random the answer should be to how many answers the model should provide and a ton more. Now, one extremely important parameter is max tokens. It's not required, there is a default value. In fact, all of these parameters have default values for the most part, but a token is the model's representation of a unit of response. So roughly speaking, one word is three quarters of a token. So when we specify max tokens in our request, what we're doing is we're telling the model to stop its response after so many tokens have been predicted by the model. There's any number of reasons you might wanna specify max tokens. For example, the cost of the model's response depends on how many tokens the model generates, also how many tokens you send to the model. 
So one reason you might want to specify max tokens is because you want to limit the expense of your API calls. So every time you send a request and get a response, you are going to pay for the tokens that are processed or predicted by the model. So longer responses are going to cost more. Now for us in the chat GPT terminal project that we're creating, our limit is more of a practical storage limit. There's only so much space we actually have on our microcontroller to record these responses. So if ChatGPT returns like a 30,000 word response to each of our questions, we'll start running out of space in our development board's memory. Now here's a really important caveat that you need to understand with max tokens. When you specify max tokens, what it will do is cut off the response of the model when it gets to that number. Let's say that you set max tokens at 100. That doesn't mean that the model will formulate its answer to fit within 100 tokens. It just means that the model is going to stop predicting once it's gotten to 100 tokens. That is, specifying max tokens, say, equals 10, does not tell the model to respond in 10 tokens or less. It simply cuts the response off at 10 tokens, that's it, and the model's gonna stop in its tracks after 10 tokens. So getting the model to respond logically with a constrained number of tokens can be somewhat handled with a system or a user message, but it really depends on the model that you're using. Different models have different capabilities when it comes to this. For example, you might have a system message that tries to specify how many words that the model should respond with. But your mileage is really gonna vary depending on the model. But all of this kind of leads us into the OpenAI API response. What is it we actually get back from the model? I mean, that's kind of what we're going after in the first place. So once we've sent our HTTP request with our JSON body specifying those parameters, you know, like the model and the messages, what we'll get back is another JSON packet that's gonna look something like this. All right, so you can see they give us a lot of different parameters. There's a lot of information we get back. But the real thing we're looking for, the key to what we want is this choices array. And inside the choices array is a message or it can be multiple messages. So we can see that the response role is assistant because this response was generated by the model. And then we get the content, which is, you know, this is kind of like what we're after. We want a response from the model. And this is the response right here. Now, another parameter we get back is the finish reason. So if you see something like stop, that means that the model actually completed its prediction. So it didn't have anything more to say based on the question that was sent in. If, however, the model did have more to say, but its prediction was cut off at max token, it will say something like max tokens reached or something along that line. I think an interesting response would be something like, I'm really tired of answering questions. Can you please just give me a break? I haven't seen that one yet, but who knows? Now you might be wondering, why is message inside a choices array? The reason for this is that you can actually specify how many different responses to get from your request. And in that case, it will generate multiple messages inside the choices array that you can then choose from. In our ChatGP Tweeno terminal code, what we'll be doing is filtering this JSON packet so that we get just the content. Because we don't, for our purposes, we don't care too much about the rest of this information. We just want to grab that content so that we can display it for the user. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is actually get your hands dirty with this stuff. What you'll do is set up your OpenAI developer account. They're gonna give you free credits to use for tokens so you can do some cool development stuff. And also you're gonna test the API with a tool called Postman. So this is gonna show you exactly how to get that set up. It's really pretty simple. Follow the steps and you're gonna be interacting with the OpenAI API in no time. It's, it's a lot of fun. So this video will get you all set up.